Good morning all and once again a very warm welcome on behalf of MIT. We are very much looking forward to supporting you with today's Test and Learn series conversation, opportunities to expand campaign effectiveness measures beyond coverage. We'd like to open with a few housekeeping notes before handing over to Leah. We're delighted to offer today's session in French and Spanish. You will see on the Zoom menu bar the interpretation button. Please select your language now. And for the benefit of our French and Spanish speakers who've already joined us, pour écouter la version française, il faut cliquer sur Interprétation dans les options de la réunion de Zoom et, um, et, et sélectionner le canal français. And again, for our Spanish listeners, uh, para escuchar la versión española, se puede hacer clic en Interpretación en las opciones de la reunión de Zoom y seleccionar el canal español. We thank you to our interpreters for your support today. Please be aware that the session will be recorded and shared with a final PowerPoint post-event on the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition website. And we'd also like to encourage interac interaction. So please use social media channels to promote and engage a wide audience with this event using the hashtag HCE Coalition. And there'll also be time for questions in the learning salon. Please add your questions to the Zoom Q&A, which can be found at the bottom of the Zoom app. You will be able to see the questions posted. You'll be able to upvote and add additional comments, as well as ask questions in English, French, and Spanish. You just type them in in either French or Spanish, you'd like to do that. And if you're finding that you're hearing questions in another language, um, please ensure that you've selected your correct interpretation booth. We will aim to answer as many questions as possible in the learning salon. And we'd also welcome comments via the Zoom chat feature. And finally, the MYT team are here to help you with any technical difficulties. Please use the chat facility on Zoom or email the team at events at myt.uk.com. And I'm now delighted to hand over to Leah to welcome you to the conversation. Thank you. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the third Test and Learn session hosted by the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition, the first ever partnership for cross-campaign collaboration. My name is Leah Denise Wyatt, and I am the Senior Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition Director and host of today's session. Please take a moment to share which country you're joining from today in the chat. And while you're doing that, this Test and Learn series fosters and facilitates learning, collaboration, and systems change across and between health campaigns. We have a narrow focus on levers within health campaigns that improve coverage, equity, cost effectiveness, and health impact, all common areas of interest among health campaign actors. I would like for us to, get to continue getting acquainted. So please indicate in this poll which campaign phase you are currently and primarily engaged in. Okay, great. So there are just three choices there. We'll show the results. Just waiting for a few more people to vote. Oh, there you go. Okay, all right. Great, excellent. So um, the majority of us joining today are engaged in planning. So that's a tip to our speaker and moderator. We're logging into this conversation from at least 20 countries and we represent the full spectrum of organizations involved in campaign delivery from ministries of health to academic institutions in addition to philanthropic, non-governmental and multilateral organizations. Representatives of the same bodies expressed an interest in exploring effective campaign planning in the first annual coalition meeting in October of 2020. Those coalition members saw an opportunity to expand measures of campaign effectiveness beyond coverage. Today, we join in conversation with Andreas Hosman of UNICEF, who will share with us preliminary findings from a study that shows which measures of effectiveness in addition to coverage would be helpful to campaign implementers. This study commissioned by the Health Campaign Effectiveness Program 
focuses on vitamin A supplementation, which is one of the largest preventative public health programs in the world that reaches almost 250 million children a year. Vitamin A supplementation was chosen because it is an intervention that is, has delivered in a large number of countries using a variety of community-based platforms and on which significant administrative and survey data are available. However, the study's conclusions that relate to measures of delivery effectiveness will apply to a, a wide range of health and nutrition interventions. So I have two more polls just to get to know, to know you a little bit better and, and for Andreas to understand the audience. Have you considered ways to measure effectiveness beyond uh, coverage in your work? Okay, and let's see, let's see the results. Excellent, great, 86%. Okay, and be that <laughs> that's true, is there a need? Even if, if you have considered ways, um, have you also found a, tr a need in, in, your, in, your, in your work, in your setting? There's the, the consideration, but is there also a, tr a need that you immediately think? Okay, let's show those results. Yes, great. Our moderator is Pooja Pandi Ronda. She is the Deputy Chief of Party at Helen Keller International in Nepal. Pooja holds a Bachelor of Management from Bangalore University in India and received her Master of Science in Public Health in Developing Countries from the University of London, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Pooja has over 20 years of experience in multi-sectoral nutrition programming in Nepal and is an active member of the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition Campaign Integration Working Group. Following the conversation, Andreas will take comments and throughout the conversation as well, will take comments and questions to share insights from the study and how they translate into recommendations and, and actions. I now turn the floor over to our moderator, Pooja Pandey Rana. Pooja, over to you. Great. Um, thanks so much, Leah. Um, so welcome everyone um, in this conversation with Dr. Andreas Hasman. I'm really delighted to be moderating this session. Um, so for this session today, we will begin uh, with a presentation by Dr. Hasman on measuring program delivery effectiveness uh, beyond coverage. Um, he will provide an overview of the study, highlight some key findings, and um, then we, can, um, we will discuss um, the possible implications of campaign planning, um, implementation, and, um, and also implication on m &E practices. Um, please note, we want this to be a very dynamic conversation, so please uh, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A box, and I will do my best to cover as many questions as possible. So without further delay, uh, let me introduce you to our speaker. Um, Dr. Hasman um, is a nutrition specialist at UNICEF program group. Uh, previously, Dr. Hasman worked as a health specialist at the UNICEF regional office for South Asia in Kathmandu, Nepal from 2014 to 2019. Um, Andreas holds a bachelor's of medicine from the University of Copenhagen in Denmark. He received his master of arts, healthcare ethics and law from University of Manchester and his um, doctor of philosophy in health policy, health economics um, and ethics from the University of Oxford. Dr. Hasman is a public health um, and nutrition specialist for over 15 years of experience um, in program delivery, monitoring, and analysis. Um, Andreas, I'm really looking forward to learning more about the study and um, over to you for your presentation. Thank you very much, um, Pooja uh, and Leah, for, for, for that introduction. Um, um, and thank you uh, for the opportunity to present to you uh, some of the preliminary results from the delivery effectiveness project uh, we've been doing uh, over the last year. I was very encouraged to see the results of the surveys 
um, suggesting that uh, we are not doing this work um, for, for, for nothing, that there is, a, there is interest and, and support for looking at um, effectiveness um, parameters beyond, beyond coverage. My name is Andreas Hassmann, um, uh, and I work at the nutrition team at the UNICEF headquarters. I would also like to acknowledge the project team that has been working on this, um, on this project, um, uh, which, uh, apart from me, consists of David Brown, Annette uh, Imohe, uh, Alina Michalska, and uh, Stacey Young. I would also like to thank the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition um, and BMGF, particularly Kendall Krauss, who has been very involved in conceptualizing this um, project from the beginning. The work was commissioned, as was mentioned before, by the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition at the Task Force for Global Health. Um, I will just need my clicker to work. Uh, Andres, if you're in trouble, I can just move the slide on for you. Oh, OK, I think, I, uh, I think it works now. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. No worries. Yeah. So um, the starting point uh, for this project was a series of uh, simple questions. Um, we asked what constitutes effective uh, delivery of preventive public health services and commodities, such as uh, vitamin A supplementation. In order to track performance um, uh, of campaigns or routine delivery, is it enough to look at just coverage or do we need something else? And if we do, um, if there is a need for, uh, for other parameters of delivery effectiveness, what are they uh, and how can we assess and, and measure them? As we started the project, uh, our objective was therefore to identify uh, effectiveness parameters and measures and to use those measures to evaluate um, uh, country programs, uh, vitamin A supplementation programs in particular. Um, and further down the line, uh, build tools for countries to use to optimize effectiveness in delivery. So today I will be uh, talking about the um, first of our uh, objectives, the identification of parameters and, and measures. Um, I will not um, present the results of the uh, uh, vitamin A supplementation specific data analysis on this occasion. Uh, but that will follow at a, at a later date. This very quickly uh, outlines the process we, uh, we, uh, we went through on, on the project. Um, we started, uh, using, um, started by using existing frameworks. Um, we identified parameters from those frameworks, uh, parameters of effectiveness beyond coverage. Um, we reviewed the literature to derive definitions of uh, these parameters. And then we consulted stakeholders, primarily program decision makers, to get a sense of what is important and how important from a practical perspective. We also interviewed key informants for a deeper understanding of effectiveness parameters. And then we went on to develop uh, measures uh, for, for the most important parameters and analyzed the um, vitamin A supplementation data in select countries um, to explore the effectiveness of different delivery uh, strategies. Um, right, so um, to start out, we, uh, we looked at existing frameworks for delivery effectiveness and quickly uh, became interested in the primary healthcare performance initiatives conceptual framework. This may be very familiar to you um, already, uh, but just to say that the PHCPI conceptual framework captures the WHO building blocks and other frameworks, but places particular emphasis on service delivery. So it seemed very appropriate um, and re really reflecting the the, um, the objectives of our project. So that was our, that was our starting point. So we um, eventually um, derived 11 uh, suggested effectiveness parameters, focusing on the service delivery and outcome section of the PHCPI conceptual framework. Um, in that framework, uh, coverage is actually the output. Um, so so that, was, that was, was also covered. 
Um, the relevant parameters for effectiveness that we identified were community awareness, community acceptance, uh, sustainability, access, availability, service quality, clinical outcomes, responsiveness, um, equity, efficiency, and resilience. So quite a, um, a comprehensive uh, list there. Um, Russell, if you could move me to my next uh, to my next slide. Um, we then um, took those eleven uh, parameters of effectiveness and developed preventive program relevant definitions for for each of them, reflecting in part um, uh, how these parameters are, are currently used in the literature, but also taking into account the needs. Uh, of programs to, to be able to track performance, as well as some of the weaknesses we discovered uh, exist in, in, uh, in some of the existing definitions. Uh, next slide, please. So after having identified and defined uh, the 11 suggested uh, delivery effectiveness parameters, we asked decision makers if, um, if these indeed are relevant uh, for decision makers. And we also asked about the relative importance of, of different, different parameters. This was done in an online survey. Um, we went global with this survey and we received um, 70 uh, complete uh, responses. Uh, next slide. Within, these, uh, within this response, uh, we had a very um, uh, equal uh, number of, of respondents from uh, the global level and from the subnational, national, and regional level, so we had both. Um, we had all perspectives uh, represented within our within our sample. Uh, next slide. Yes. So the dots are moving slowly into position, but um, this is just to show you that we had pretty good representation in the response from a range of different programs. So it was not just uh, vitamin A supplementation uh, uh, respondents. We, we had um, most respondents from immunization and nutrition programs of which uh, vitamin A supplementation is one, but also uh, maternal and newborn health, uh, malaria, polio, HIV, AIDS, S, uh, uh, SRH and NTD programs. Um, several respondents, uh, we were very pleased to see had I had experience from more than one program. So they offered really broad perspective. Next slide, please. Um, so please don't, um, uh, be, please don't be put off by the uh, data richness of this uh, particular slide. Um, this is just to reflect that we asked respondents to choose which parameters are important from our list of 11 um, uh, parameters which are important for decision-making. And then subsequently, we asked them to rank uh, that the parameters that they're chosen in terms of um, importance. So the bars in this slide, um, yes, if we could go back one, uh, please. So the bars to the, to the right uh, show how many of the respondents chose that particular parameter. And the bars to the left that are sort of in gray shade, um, they show uh, how many didn't choose that uh, parameter as being important to, to decision making. Uh, next slide, now, please. The shorter dark uh, bars that have now uh, appeared in, in, in the slide uh, to the right show how many uh, respondents found the parameter to be highly important. So uh, of the people who chose it to, have, uh, to be relevant for decision making, how many uh, described it as, as highly important. So these, um, uh, the bottom line from, from this online survey was that uh, equity, uh, service quality, access, uh, sustainability, community acceptance, and availability were selected most frequently as being relevant to, to decision-making. And then we also uh, found that uh, sustainability and um, community acceptance were perhaps seen as less, uh, uh, less important, although they were selected as uh, being relevant to decision-making, perhaps less, seen as less important. Um, that could have something to do with um, 
with the with uncertainties about about definitions. Uh, next slide, please. We then took the, uh, the those uh, uh, six most important parameters uh, minus uh, service quality, and and defined measures uh, for e for each of them, and then we took used those measures to to go to vitamin A supplementation data to do to do the analysis. We did not include uh, service uh, quality uh, due to uh, a lack of data on vitamin A supplementation relating to that particular parameter. But that might be different in other programs. Uh, in other programs, there might be better, better data, and that, that, then that parameter could feasibly be included as well among these, um, uh, uh, among these important parameters to focus on. Um, so Pooja, I would, um, I would pause uh, there to, to see if you have any uh, reflections, uh, or if there are any reflections on this uh, so far. Over to you. Great. Uh, thanks, Andreas. Very insightful. Um, I must say these are very ambitious, but uh, important set of parameters and uh, much needed in the changing implementation environment since the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, as a program implementer, I really appreciate that the 11 uh, parameters covers the full program spectrum from policy to delivery systems to uh, target group uh, level indicators. Um, as you were presenting the study concept and the parameters, I could not help but reflect on my own country's um, child health and nutrition campaigns. And while many of these parameters could apply to Nepal, um, some may not be relevant, uh, especially if I start looking at subnational levels. Um, you know, there, uh, there are a lot of variations and also variations by socioeconomic status, age, age groups, ethnicity. Um, I would uh, be interested to know if there's flexibility to prioritize these indicators um, based on country context or implementation environment. Um, you know, can key decision makers choose from these many of 11 parameters um, to measure delivery effectiveness? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that, uh, Pooja. You raise a very, very important uh, point. And our project took a took very much a global uh, helicopter view of these um, of, of these uh, these issues, and um, all along it, it was very it was very clear that um, that uh, particular country context would have an impact on what would be the priority in terms of um, parameters to focus on, and also um, in in many cases. Uh, Data availability will be will, will be a, 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 an issue. Uh, at least that is what we see at the, at the global level. Um, but the, those issues, or the data available at, at country level, might vary from country to country. So uh, some countries will will be in a much better position on some of these uh, uh, parameters to uh, to generate data or to use the data they already have. So uh, so in answer to your to your question, uh, certainly, and and as we move this work. Uh, forward, we would also expect to see uh, to see a process happening at the at the country level, where the this knowledge is applied, and um, and a set of of relevant parameters that are particularly uh, relevant in the in the country context would would be would be um, would be generated. Great, thanks, Andreas. And uh, we have a couple of questions at the Q and A box as well. Um, so the first one is about um, the definition. So is it possible that there are overlaps in the definitions of these parameters? Yes, there is, there is, uh, there is clearly a, a, um, a, a potential for that to happen, especially uh, relating to those parameters that are um, where, where the, the precise definition is, is under, under discussion. And, Later, later on, I will I will highlight some of the some of the some of the issues we've seen uh, relating to sustainability, where uh, different people can have very different a very different understanding of what what uh, what that parameter means, what what the definition is, and in in those situations, there will of course be be an, an overlap uh, between or a potential for overlap between the different uh, parameters. Um, I would say the. Um, the way to deal with that with that problem is to be very specific in the uh, in the measures you use to to track uh, progress relating to 
to to the to the parameters. So that's why you really have to be very specific what you what you mean and what kind of data you want to generate to to make uh, to inform decisions. But thank you for that question. Very very relevant issue. Yes, um, maybe we can take one more question um, from Patrick. Uh, so the 11 parameters are certainly important and comprehensive. Um, and Patrick asks, if, uh, are you aware of any exemplar programs um, in the region where all 11 parameters are measured as part of the program's m and &E? uh, Could such stellar programs uh, serve as a model from which um, others could learn? Great, great, great suggestion. Uh, I think it is unlikely that there will be there will be programs that track all all um, all eleven uh, in in a comprehensive uh, in a comprehensive way. But there will certainly be programs that track uh, a majority of uh, a lot of them. Or have started thinking about how to how to um, how to track the parameters that are perhaps not so well defined or established in in the way we think about uh, about m and e and uh, the way we track uh, uh, performance but i think that is that is an that is an excellent idea and it's, it's um it's some of the it's it's one of one of the ideas we have for the next stage of of this of this work to go to to select countries to see what is actually happening in in those countries how is data generated and how is that data used in in decision making um so we should definitely talk more about that uh, down the line. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the um, question. Okay. So there are a couple of questions around equity and sustainability, which um, I think you're going to cover um, in the next se um, se uh, segment. So over to you, Andreas, to continue your presentation. Thank you. Yes. So um, so um, in the previous um, segment, we. Um, we ended on the uh, on the on the most important um, uh, parameters, and I wanted to to give uh, two examples uh, of the uh, of the process we went through in the next stage, uh, developing measures uh, to go to go with uh, with these uh, with these parameters. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and uh, in the interest of time, I will. Um, as mentioned uh, before, I'll focus on, on two of them. Um, uh, on it, I will focus on equity and on sustainability. So, next slide, please. So, what we um, what we wanted um, uh, the equity measure to capture was um, some sort of uh, identification or, or measurement uh, of. Um, of equity and inequity in uh, vitamin A supplementation programs, um, but as we have already touched upon, there there are there are many definitions of uh, of equity and specific ways of um, of uh, operationalizing the, the the concept. Uh, but we decided to define it uh, quite narrowly as the absence of uh, multiple other deprivations among children uh, not receiving vitamin A supplementation. And I'll explain uh, a little bit uh, why, why we decided to, uh, to adapt that particular definition. Uh, next slide, please. So traditionally, um, we understand equity as the absence of differences in outcomes, such as uh, coverage between, uh, between uh, identifiable groups. For example, the poorest uh, uh, and the richest children. Um, and when we look at when we look at equity or inequity, we might we might focus on the absolute difference between those groups in terms of coverage, for example, or the relative the relative difference. So that is that is the that is the traditional way of slightly simplified is the traditional way of conceptualizing uh, equity. Uh, next slide, please. The problem, the problem with with uh, with that kind of measure is that it um, it fails to capture several important aspects of um, of equity. Uh, first, the most disadvantaged children suffer multiple deprivations rather than just the one. Um, for example, in addition to not receiving uh, vitamin A supplementation, the most disadvantaged children are also likely not to have received uh, vaccines. Um, 
And then some of these additional uh, deprivations uh, may put the child uh, at increased risk. For example, from uh, risk, uh, increased risk of, of infections. So that is not captured either in the, in the traditional equity measure. <clears throat> the, the third problem uh, with, with, this, uh, with this traditional measure of equity is that it doesn't account for how many children are actually in each, each of these groups. Um, if the disadvantaged group is very small uh, and only has a few, few children in it, any uh, inequity in outcomes would arguably matter less than if there are a lot of children um, in the disadvantaged group or if that group is very large. And that is not captured either in, the, in our traditional way of, of looking at, at equity. Um, next slide, please. So um, we decided, <coughs> excuse me, we decided to use a, a measure of equity that addresses those uh, problems uh, within, within the traditional understanding of equity. Um, we did that by uh, first selecting five deprivations that we uh, uh, felt were somehow relevant to vitamin A supplementation. So those five deprivations were uh, no improved water source uh, in the household, mother not having received uh, formal uh, education, uh, uh, household being in the poorest wealth quintile, and the child not receiving the first dose of the DTP vaccine, uh, and the child not receiving the first dose of the measles containing uh, vaccines. Um, so um, then uh, using uh, DHS uh, surveys, uh, we divided uh, children aged nine months to 35 months into six, uh, six groups. One group that had uh, none of the five uh, deprivations we have on the slide here, another group that had one of the deprivations um, and so forth uh, up to five deprivations. So six groups in, in, in total. And we then determined uh, by using uh, DHS uh, survey data, we determined what percentage of children in each of these six groups had not received vitamin A supplementation in the last uh, six months. Uh, next slide, please. This is how, how we, we, we might present those uh, findings. Uh, it's just an example. I, we use Pakistan here, um, but uh, I, I won't discuss the details of the, of, of the Pakistan uh, case. And please don't be uh, put off by the complexity of, of the slide. This is quite simple, uh, really. Um, at the top, uh, we have a column for each of, um, of, the, of the deprivation groups. So each of the groups with zero uh, to five uh, deprivation. Um, and each column shows the percentage of children not receiving vitamin A supplementation in the, in the past six months. Then the lower part of the, of, of the diagram um, shows, shows you how many children um, not receiving vitamin A supplementation in the last six months uh, in each of the six groups. So in Pakistan, uh, in the case of Pakistan, most children are in the, in the group of in the zero deprivations. Um, yes. Um, so um, next slide, please. Um, so four, uh, four pieces of information uh, uh, from, from these data that uh, tells us how equitable the vitamin A supplementation program is. Uh, first, we can look at the uh, percentages that miss uh, vitamin A supplementation in each of the, of the six uh, deprivation groups. Second, we can look at the absolute and relative difference between the groups with uh, zero deprivations uh, and the group uh, with uh, five deprivations. That will also give us an, an idea of, of, of equity. Finally, we can look at how many children not receiving VAS, uh, vitamin A supplementation have more than three deprivations. So that would also, a lot of children in that group would tell us that uh, there might be an equity issue. Uh, next slide, please. I think, yeah, jump, jump a, a, couple, uh, a couple there. And the next one, yeah, that one. Um, 
so we then, we can then bring uh, those uh, those pieces of information uh, into a um, a kind of equity profile for the for the for the program, and we we might conclude that for an equitable program, we can expect uh, low absolute and relative differences between the zero deprivation group and the five uh, deprivation group, and we would also expect to see few children. Uh, with three, four, or five uh, of the uh, of the of the deprivations. Then, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, the inequitable program, we would expect high absolute and relative differences uh, between between the groups, and we would expect to see many children uh, in the in the in groups uh, in the groups with four with three, four, and five uh, deprivations. At least that's one way uh, to to bring it together into a into a, a profile. Um, so that is uh, that is a suggestion for how we how we might measure uh, equity in a way that that addresses some of the some of the challenges uh, with, with traditional measures of, of equity. But of course, this is not a, a flawless way of of, 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 con of um, considering equity. And I'm sure that uh, uh, that you will have uh, many reflections on how, how this might work in practice. Uh, next slide, please. So the second example uh, of a measure I wanted to share uh, today uh, was one that was uh, quite challenging for us, actually. And that's because um, there are uh, more than one way we can think about and define sustainability. So um, the process of defining measures for sustainability was a challenging one. Uh, one definition um, is sustainability as the program's ability to sustain higher coverage continuously. So that, that would be one way to, to conceptualize uh, sustainability in, in this context. But there is another uh, way of defining uh, sustainability, which is more to do with the programs or even the caregivers' um, uh, ability to afford delivery uh, going, going forward. Um, and that definition is then more related to discussions about uh, longer term uh, funding for programs, uh, transition to, uh, to government uh, ownership and government funding. Um, our objective was to define a measure of how sustainable a delivery program is in vitamin A supplementation. And we chose the, the, the first definition uh, in the first instance. So we looked at sustainable coverage and defined um, sustainability as sustain, sustained coverage over time. Uh, next slide. Um, again, uh, quite a heavy, heavy slide. Uh, we don't need to, to spend much time on it. Uh, just to say that we looked across uh, 64 countries uh, that have uh, BAS programs. And we identified five countries that uh, had shown um, sustained high coverage over over a nine year period, um, and those those uh, um, uh, programs are at the top of of, of the slide. Uh, next slide, please. However, and this is where the problem came in. Um, we found that um, uh, that eighty percent of those fifteen countries used campaigns um, uh, only to, to deliver vitamin A supplementation. And uh, a campaign uh, is, um, is normally seen as a, is, is often seen as, a, um, uh, as an unsustainable uh, uh, delivery platform. Uh, and that is using the, the other definition of sustainability that I, that I mentioned before. The one focusing on on lo longer term affordability. Um, so um, it might be uh, the, the conclusion from this might be that um, uh, that um, programs that use campaign primarily are more effective in terms of uh, sustainability than programs that use other other means of uh, of, of delivery, uh, such as routine. Um, so. Bottom line for us uh, going, going through this process was that for a complex, complex effectiveness a parameter such as sustainability, we really need more than one measure to capture, to capture all aspects and to get a full picture of what, what that uh, effectiveness parameter means. Um, so 
just highlighting highlighting that that experience uh, for, for for further uh, discussion. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, and the next one. Yes. Um, so I will end with a few uh, reflections on practical use of the of the parameters of effectiveness uh, beyond coverage. So as we are coming to the end of this work, we envisage that countries can use this approach to evaluate the effectiveness of, of their programs. And as, uh, as we discussed before, there might be uh, uh, countries to focus on first that are, that are, that are further advanced in, in, uh, in taking this broader perspective on, on effectiveness and, and pulling together the data. Um, we also envisage that we can uh, potentially compare um, uh, programs across, across countries, um, which will then open up opportunities to have uh, to develop um, recommended strategies that optimize effectiveness in specific, specific contexts. And eventually, countries might even be able to use the parameters to plan and to course correct um, uh, their programs uh, as, part of, as part of service delivery. However, the challenge in doing that is that um, uh, data, data, data is not available in, uh, in, in most countries to do that uh, at present. So it's something to work, to work towards. We, of course, used um, population-based survey data in, in our analysis. And those data are not uh, uh, sufficiently frequent uh, to enable planning, also sort of real-time planning in, in countries. So we would need to go down different routes to, to generate data for this. So I, I will leave it there. Um, many thanks for, for listening and um, I'll hand it back to, to you, Pooja, for any questions. Great, uh, thanks so much, Andreas. Um, I think the study findings really highlights that um, in addition to achieving high population coverage, um, you know, campaigns should also strive at ensuring quality and equity um, while maintaining scale and sustainability. Um, so, you know, let me start with the basic uh, question um, on equity that many decision makers at the government or uh, program level often ask, um, and that is how, what can be done to reach um, the most vulnerable when working at scale or national level? Yes, and I, I think that is for for most programs that is the um, that is the that is the key that is the key key question. So how do we how do we move beyond um, crude uh, comparisons of, of of groups to actually identify the the, the children that uh, that need uh, to be um, to be reached and and are, are persistently uh, missed in, in in programs such as vitamin A supplementation. Um, I um, and this is what I was referring to uh, when when saying earlier that uh, that our measure, the measure of, of um, equity that we are developing, is not uh, we are not there yet. Uh, and mm -hmm. so you would not, at least not in its current form, you would not be able to identify the specific um, uh, uh, children that need to be that need to be uh, targeted. But I think I think. The measure I have just uh, outlined uh, is a step in the right direction. So we would be able to see uh, to pair this and, for example, look at look at um, uh, look at maps, uh, map, map these results um, uh, mm -hmm. to, to geographical areas, and we could see that uh, that there are particular issues with with um, uh, with children experiencing multiple deprivations in this area. And then we could we could start to target efforts in, in that in that direction. So all this to say that we are not there yet, but uh, but we feel that this is a step in in the in the right direction. So breaking it down and getting more information about um, uh, who who these uh, children experiencing uh, inequity uh, who they who they are. Great. Um... It seems there's a lot of interest on equity uh, parameters. So there are two more questions. Um, um, so one is um, around, um, you know, the 
measuring equity using the poorest quintile. Um, so is it possible that households in the poorest quintile more likely, uh, most likely to have all other factors impacting um, their households? So why not use uh, the poorest quintile as an uh, indicator? Um, so, um, I mean, that is, um, that is some, that's one of the details we will have we will have to look into in, in, in more details. Uh, if there are, if there indeed are deprivations that can be used as a, as a, as a, as a tracer uh, mm -hmm. for, for all these uh, other deprivations. Um, what we are, I mean, our, our preliminary analysis suggests that it is very difficult to, to, uh, to, to do that, or, or particularly to use um, income, uh, household income as, as, that, as that tracer. And it doesn't mm -hmm. give it doesn't give a um, a, um, a uniform picture across across countries and across uh, and across programs. Um, so in in some countries, uh, the um, that might be targeted, particularly uh, in programs that are that are very focused at the community level. There might be special efforts to reach the poorest households. Uh, there might be. Um, Social policy schemes that, that that target that that group particularly, and that means that um, that it is they are not experiencing at, at least some of the some of the deprivations you uh, that, that that we included in our in our deprivation score. Uh, so um, the answer is that we need we need a we need a much closer look at, at that, and it's it's a very good idea because that would that would that would make the exercise much simpler. So something we will look at, and um, and we'll we'll get back uh, back to you on that one. Great. Um, and there's another question um, regarding the zero dose community. So how do we use these new measures um, to overlap with the zero dose communities for immunization? Um, yes. So um, so this is um, this is relating to equity. In, in, Specifically as well, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so we, um, so zero dose uh, uh, for immunization is is of course a, a very hot topic, and uh, and uh, a lot of a lot of attention is going going that way. That was one of the reasons we included uh, DTP one uh, as one of our of our deprivations to get that uh, to get that link uh, between the, between the two. Um, if um, th there's also an opportunity to go to 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 look at it in the opposite in the opposite way and to replace vitamin A supplementation, uh, zero dose uh, vitamin A supplementation for uh, zero dose uh, de uh, immunization, and and to and to to look at it uh, that way. That there are some some technical uh, issues uh, with that, but but in principle we would be able to do that, and then we can compare the the equity profiles we have across programs in that in that way. Um, so I hope I hope that that answered uh, the, the questions. I'm really very interested in this topic and, and would love love to continue that discussion. In, indeed. Um, so maybe we can now move towards the use of uh, these findings um, by key decision makers. Um, maybe I can start. Um, there's a question by Eva, and um, she asked the analysis used heavily um, um, on uh, the DHS population based surveys. How can we use countries' um, administrative data to inform decisions around delivery effectiveness? Yes, uh, excellent, excellent question, and mm -hmm. um, and it is. Um, I, I agree with you, uh, Eva, that there is a there is a need uh, to move this discussion uh, beyond uh, population-based uh, surveys, and um, what. What that requires, though, is that we have a we have more of an overview of what is. Um, yes, I'm. I'm sorry, all the. Uh, I don't know if you pick up all the noise. It seems my my neighbor is breaking down a wall or something. <laughs> um, but um, yes, so we will be. Um, um, so and that, that's that's what I mean. The, the, a next a next stage for in in this work uh, would uh, the the logical next step would be to take to take these findings to the country level. And see what is available in terms of ad administrative uh, data, uh, in terms of maybe uh, primary uh, data that can be that can be generated uh, quite easily and, um, and without too high a cost uh, within the country context, and 
and and then use that data to populate uh, populate the this uh, model that that we are uh, that that we are generating. So that that might uh, that might change the measures, of course, that you that that you look at. And our premise has been uh, the data we have had available to us. So we have we have identified uh, our measures uh, on that basis in countries. Uh, and I'll be really keen to work with, with country teams on this. Um, it would be um, it would be a way to um, uh, to identify what is available in, in, in specific context. Um, great, thanks, Andrew. So maybe we can move um, towards um, the sustainability indicator. Um, so in terms of the parameter sustainability, um, you know, you focused on continuation of services um, yeah. in the mid to uh, longer term. But as you mentioned, you know, strong political and financial commitment is also uh, very, very important to maintain program sustainability. How can we measure those aspects? Yes, it is. Um, that is a, another excellent, uh, another excellent question. And um, and I think there are there are there are different ways uh, to to do that. Um, we can we can look at uh, we can focus. I, I guess the first step is to is to identify what what additional definitions of of uh, sustainability beyond uh, beyond uh, sustained coverage do we want do we want to look at do we want to look at um, do we want to look at uh, government uh, affordability um, as a, as an aspect of that I think for for vitamin A supplementation that would be that would be a, a primary uh, focus in other programs it might not be and that is because um, vitamin A supplementation is free. Usually, in most countries, it's mm -hmm. free. Other programs where there is a there is a cost to the to the caregiver, um, you might want to look at uh, affordability uh, to to the caregiver as a as a as a measure of of your uh, sustainability. Um, what I was trying to to communicate in the in the presentation is that um, for some of these indicate for some of these parameters. We will need multiple measures to capture all different aspects, and um, so looking in vitamin A supplementation, we might look at um, share of uh, government um, uh, sh share of programmatic uh, costs that are covered by the by the government, and mm -hmm. um, we might be able to we might have to generate new data in, in many countries to um, to to get a handle on that. But that that would be one one way of, of of doing it. Other programs there might be there might be other approaches that can be taken. Great, um, and we have one suggestion um, from the audience. Um, so for measuring sustainability, why not use coverage rates through routine care, routine health service? Um, yes, um, so uh, I'm not sure I, I think I understand Yeah, uh, so I think the suggestion was to look at uh, uh, in terms of measuring sustainability, looking yeah. at coverage rates through routine healthcare. Yeah, only uh, so routine, routine only. Yes, that that would be, that would that 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 might be a, a helpful um, uh, additional measure of of. Uh, so yeah, okay. So now now I understand, putting a, a particular focus on uh, on coverage in routine in, in routine systems, and mm -hmm. and track track progress in terms of. Um, uh, sustainability as as affordability uh, through through that means. I think that that is an excellent yeah. uh, suggestion. That's a, exactly very yeah. interesting. Um, so um, Andrew, I mean, we talked about the importance of um, you know political and financial commitment for program sustainability, um, but we know in real world setting, um, you know, governments and funders have multiple priorities. Um, and how do you suggest that countries use um, the findings from this work? Um, in light of limited funding and um, you know other pressing priorities, especially in context of um, COVID nineteen now. So I, th I think I think um, uh, I think our model, uh, if, if used in a, in a comprehensive way and in a way that is that uh, reflects um, the 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 priorities at at, at country level. So, and this is particularly the selection of, of, of parameters to, uh, to, to track, uh, parameters of, of effectiveness uh, to track. I think that will generate a lot of, um, 
a lot of uh, support for uh, arguments to to fund a, a particular program because it is bringing in so many as different aspects of, uh, of 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 effectiveness that it would be easier to 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 articulate the case for for funding funding a, a, a program. Um, and that may be uh, there might be situations where where performance uh, effectiveness is, is very low. And, uh, and the argument is then about um, what, what will be required uh, in investment terms to, to bring it up. It can also be um, uh, a very, very highly performing program. Uh, data collected through this model uh, would uh, then support to an argument that, that uh, support for that program should continue. And, um, and uh, there might even be other programs that could learn from, from, the, from the successful uh, program. Mm. But we won't be able to make those conclusions uh, unless we have, we have a, a handle, uh, a way to, to measure and, to, and also to, to conceptualize uh, these, um, these benefits that, that, uh, that come from, from, from programs. So, so I, yeah, the short answer to that question is uh, and a, a more comprehensive approach like this will we'll, we'll, we'll put programs in a stronger position to argue for additional funding. Great, thanks. So maybe we can take one more uh, last question um, before the closing. Um, I think one suggestion is um, to look at um, look the data at the subnational level. And there's a question on if the data was disaggregated by um, sex or um, at subnational levels for all the countries. Um, in 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 the analysis we are doing, uh, we. Yes. Uh, we we will be able to, to do that. Uh, and that is one of the advantages of using uh, uh, population-based uh, surveys. So uh, disaggregate uh, geographic, geographically is, is certainly a, a, a possibility. And something we, we, we have been looking at in relation to some of the, some of the, the, the parameters. Um, the, um, in terms of uh, disaggregation by, by sex, uh, I think in, in other programs that might be more, uh, more of, a, of a primary focus than it has been for, for vitamin mm -hmm. A uh, supplementation. So um, we, don't see, we don't see huge uh, disparities uh, between uh, girls and, 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 and boys. Um, there are, of course, other gender, uh, gender issues that will, uh, that will come into, in, into this. And, but perhaps that is best uh, left for, 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 a, for a separate uh, discussion. But th th thanks for that question. And it's something, something we, have, um, we have a focus on. Great. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Andres. I think we're coming to an end of this really interesting conversation. Um, so thank you so much for your presentation and for your thoughtful responses. Um, I'm sure the audience really appreciate it. Um, thank you to the audience for joining and uh, asking those tough and interesting questions. Um, I think moving forward, I truly hope we all can engage in delivery effectiveness discussions with key decision makers, um, especially at the country level. As I re really think that these set of 11 parameters really help in answering important questions you know, around implementing health and nutrition campaigns, um, not just with high coverage, but with quality and equity and um, sustainability. So thank you again. And I will now pass on to Leah to close the session. Pooja, thank you for moderating an excellent session and for Andreas for helping us to advance this important conversation on campaign effectiveness measures. I heard of a lot of opportunities for advancing what's measured and how it's measured. Um, just really quickly, did this test and learn session provide you with new knowledge? That's a question for the for participants in the room. Um, and then a follow-up question to that is, are you interested in using equity or sustainability measures in campaign implementation? And if so, um, there are opportunities for us to deepen and uh, this, this discussion during the next and second annual uh, coalition meeting in October um, of 2021. That's October 19th and 20th. So first, did this um, session provide you with new knowledge, true or false? Um, we can go ahead and close that one. Thank you. 
And are you interested in using equity or sustainability measures in campaign implementation? True or false? Okay, we can close that one. Thank you. All right. So Andreas has agreed to respond to questions we weren't able to address in the setting today. Um, and those answers will be posted to LinkedIn. Just search for Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition. Um, you'll also receive a recording of this session and the slide deck via email. And it will also be posted to our website, campaigneffectiveness.org. You'll have an opportunity to revisit implications of this study um, feel free to contact us directly um, if you are interested in or even have um, any models or, or have practiced using um, measures beyond coverage um, uh, that relate to effectiveness or excuse me, equity or sustainability. Um, we'd love to hear from you. As a reminder, the Health Campaign Effectiveness Coalition is a cross campaign coalition that fosters learning and systems change. In that vein, I invite you to register for the next test and learn session on July 27th, titled Standardizing Immunization Campaign Costing Measures. We will be joined by Laura Boonstoppel of ThinkWell, who is an experienced health economist, primarily focused on health financing and human resources for health. Her team at ThinkWell is developing a guide to help standardize immunization costing measures or methods. ThinkWell conducted a series of campaign costing studies in India, um, Sierra Leone and Nigeria to test several methods and tools. Um, we've invited Laura to discuss and compare those preliminary findings from, the, from those studies. You can go to campaigneffectiveness.org slash events to register for that test and learn session. And until next time, um, please stay safe, wear your mask, wash your, wash your hands and watch, watch your distance. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. So on behalf of the NYT events team, it's been our pleasure to support you today. And thank you to everyone for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you at our next session in the series. We will now end the session. Thank you.